where I saw him, he was in the he was 27 years old. He was in the prime of his career, and he was the elite of the elite. And, and that's I, how you got hooked. I got hooked, hooked, hooked. Line of sync. I I went there the next day. I signed up, and I was there every fucking day, every huh. day. Yeah, I became obsessed. Interesting. So I didn't want to do anything that fucked me up. And my my friend Jimmy, his cousin, was selling coke. And I knew his cousin Mike from, like, when he wasn't selling coke. Like, he was a mechanic. He's a cool guy. You know, fixed my car for me. He was a fucking guy from the neighborhood. We hang out with him. And then him and his girl got into coke bad. He was selling coke. And then he was just fucking just emaciated. He looked like he got bit by a vampire. Hmm. And they would hide in their, they had an attic apartment. They would just go in that attic apartment and do coke every day. And I was like, fuck coke. And That's I, hardcore to get like hooked like that. He got hooked. Well, he was also selling it. Yeah. So he had all this access to coke. But it was people in the neighborhood. I saw them doing coke and they just wanted to do coke all the time. They wanted to get out and do coke. And as a kid who was like finally i was a loser my whole life and then finally when i was 15 i found this thing that i got obsessed with that changed the way people looked at me like i was now all of a sudden i was good at something like really good at something and then i became state champion four years in a row and i won the u.s open and i won these national tournaments and it was a big fucking deal for me so i was like i am not doing anything that jeopardizes that right and coke to me was the big one like i knew that that was it i feel like if I got drunk, in which I did occasionally, I would feel like shit the next day. I couldn't train well. I was hung over, and, and I'd get beat up in sparring. I was like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. So I just cut most partying. Like, I smoked pot a handful of times. I got drunk a handful of times during high school and in, in, in my early 20s. And then uh, I just, in the comedy world, Coke was a problem with there, too. I, su I saw all, the, when I, I used to work at Nick's Comedy Stop in Boston. Yeah, sure. Was, and they, they offered to pay me in Coke or money. Like, the, when you work there for a weekend, like, you want to get paid in Coke or you want to get paid in money? And even <laughs> trade? Like, same amount of Coke, you, the well, dollar some guys value? went half-half. Yeah. Some guys went half-half. I guess. Cool. It, if you like it, it's easy but access. There were so many guys that got hooked on Coke. I knew so many guys that had Coke problems. that I was like, that is a pitfall. Like, I wanted to succeed. And I felt like that was one. And also, it was a drug that got you hyped up. And yeah, I, right. I liked being hyped up. And my friend Jimmy said this to me, he goes, don't do coke, you'll like it. I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget this. It was me and my friend Steve, we were driving home from uh, Kelly's Roast Beef in uh, Revere, Massachusetts. Yep. And we're- Overrated. Uh, yeah, it's a little overrated. The beef is, but- Yeah, the clams are pretty good. Yeah. So we were, we were driving and there was a car next to us and they had the dome light on and there was a girl in the back seat doing blow off a mirror. So she's there yeah, <laughs> doing yeah. blow and she looks over at us and we're, I'm looking over to her and she goes, <laughs> just for no reason, yeah. just fuck you. <laughs> I mean, that's Revere Beach. But that's Coke too. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, no Coke. And then I also had another buddy who got arrested who was selling coke and he got arrested for murder. And this was a scary murder where they beat. How close were you with this guy? He's a training partner of mine. Yeesh. Yeah, I knew him very well. I don't think he did that murder. He might have did that murder. I don't he He did some shit. He wound up going to jail. He went to jail for quite a long time. Uh, quite a few years and then he came out and he was just a totally different person. He came out super jacked. And all of, he had a bunch of like really bad tattoos, and all of them were now these heavy keloid scars. Like he had like burned off his tattoos or cut off his tattoos or some shit. I don't know what he did in prison. He was real vague about it. But when he came out, like he was a fucking different human. He was an animal. You didn't want, if you sparred him, like when we sparred, they weren't sparring matches, they were fights. Like they were full on fights. Like we would spar like we were trying to kill each other. It was very dangerous. And uh, he was doing, I knew he was selling coke and doing coke. And then he got arrested for this murder where they took this guy. And um, again, I don't know if he did it, but he did, he did get arrested and then released. They broke all the bones in this guy's body with a hammer. And they kept injecting him with cocaine to keep him awake. What? Yeah. And then they cut his hands off and they cut his head off. And then they left his body somewhere. And that I think the idea of cutting his hands off was to hide his fingerprints. And then this dude got arrested for that crime. And I was like, geez. So it was more evidence to me like, Coke is fucking crazy business.